Hey, blessings to you, Kanaya. God bless you. Give everybody a moment to come on in. Amen, amen, amen. Come on in, come on in. I want to talk to you for just a moment. Praise the Lord. Come on in, come on in. When you come in, say something. Say praise the Lord and hey there, how you doing? Amen, so I know you're here. Praise the Lord. Good evening, Sister Shanice. God bless you. Amen. Come on in. Praise the Lord. I don't plan to be before you long. That's my word. Hey, Sister Chanel, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 I'm going to let a couple of more people come on, and then we're going to get started. Can y'all do me a favor? Can you guys uh, take a moment to uh, love this and, and maybe tag somebody and share? Hey, Sister Ashley, God bless you. Do me a favor, tag somebody. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And uh, hopefully somebody may see this a little later on. Um, but tonight, I want to talk about checking your connection. I want to talk about checking your connection. Hey, Jada, how are you doing? Hey, Amen. I want to talk about checking your connection. Have you ever... Uh, Attempted to use your mobile, your mobile phone. And uh, back in the day, uh, I used to have some jet leg mobile company, which will remain nameless. Uh, and they didn't have um, uh, access to the towers uh, in the areas that I did. And, and, you know, I traveled quite a bit. And so when I would get into these particular areas, uh, my phone uh, would go in and out, or sometimes it would freeze. And even now today, uh, having the type of uh, wireless uh, connections that we have, um, our phones tend to, when we don't have the proper connection or we're not on the right Wi-Fi, your uh, pictures freeze up or, uh, you know, things happen because uh, of a poor connection. Well, tonight, I want to encourage you as, as a believer to check your connection with God. The first thing I want to tell you tonight is everything that we know about God, amen, hinges on his faithfulness and his honesty. Number one, God, amen, cannot lie. We believe that. God can't lie. God is honest, praise the Lord. God is consistent, amen. Every day, the sun shines. Every night, praise the Lord, the sun goes down. There are four seasons consistently. I know we, some people may argue con considering how the weather is sometime, but there are consistently four seasons every year. December comes every year. January comes every year. Praise the Lord. Every 30 days, you see a new moon. Praise the Lord. Because that's the cycle of the moon. Praise the Lord. And, and the Bible teaches us that as long as the earth remains, we have seed, time, and harvest, cold, winter, and heat. So what that tells me is that the promises of God are consistent. So God, and then he says, for I am the Lord and I change not. Praise the Lord. Uh, and in Hebrews, he said, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we know something about God. We know that he is the same. He does not change. We know that he does not lie. 
Come on, somebody. He is honest. And then we know that, praise the Lord, he is consistent all times. So in serving God, praise the Lord, amen, and his word, amen, if we do what his word says or work the principles of the word, then we're going to get, amen, praise the Lord, the results that the word says, amen. Praise the Lord, because God does not lie. So it's it's not hitting and missing. Well, my issue tonight is I noticed the saints of God. And please hear my heart tonight. I, I, I didn't get up here to beat up on anybody. I didn't get up here to uh, be condescending or judgmental. But, but my heart is stared because I see a lot of us as believers living beneath our privilege. And, and the way we act as if God is not fair or if God is blessing everyone else but us or, or, or that we can't seem to get the victory. Do you know people that's like they all, their life is always in a crisis? Every time you turn around, there's a crisis. Now, the Bible does say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that a man that is born of a woman has a short time and their days are full of trouble. So we do know that at some point in our life, we will encounter difficulty. We will encounter trouble sometimes. Sometimes there's going to be an enemy. But, but according to the word of God, he says when a man's ways please God, he makes his enemies be at peace with him. So that's the word of God. And so if God says certain things will happen, if we do or participate in certain things, then that means, amen, praise the Lord, then certain things are going to happen. So if certain things are not happening in my life, praise the Lord, and I'm talking about on a consistent basis, then that simply means, praise the Lord, that the fault is not in God, the fault is not in God's word, but the fault is in my ability to do, hallelujah. See, my, 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 my line just uh, clicked because of a connection issue. <laughs> Connections. I want you to hear this. John chapter 15, verses one through four. Somebody type that, amen. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. So, praise the Lord, my, my, my connection to God, amen, determines what kind of fruit I'm going to bear. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. I'm going to read a little bit further. Praise the Lord. Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. You that abide in me and I in him, he brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. So people that are spiritually withering is because they're not connected properly to the vine. They're not connected properly to Jesus. Amen. If you're always spiritually weak, you always need encouragement. You can never ever seem to uh, 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 triumph over whatever you got going on in your life. There is a problem with your connection. God is the same. Amen. Praise the Lord. God does not lie. Come on, somebody. And so if God is the same and God does not lie and I'm not experiencing the supernatural in my life that the word has has said, then what that means is there is a problem with my connection to God because God is the same. I want you to understand what I'm telling you. God is the same. And so my connection determines what kind of fruit I'm going to bear. Somebody type, check your connection, check your connection. You see, there's no way that you can be a man connected to God and remain the same. 
It just, it, it's not like that. There's no way you can be connected to God and still continue to produce on the same level. Those that are connected to God, they grow more and more in him. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. When you are connected to God, amen, hallelujah, you'll find out that the thing that used to cause you to stumble in my connection, I've grown and it doesn't cause me to stumble anymore. I got the victory over this life, over this particular a uh, thing in my life. So it must be if I'm still struggling, it's my connection in that area. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. And so we need to stop putting the blame on God. Like I'm waiting on God. I'm waiting on God to do this. And I'm waiting on God to do that. And, 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 and sometimes saying I'm waiting on God, praise the Lord, is just an, an excuse to tell us that we have not conformed to God's principles. Listen at what I'm telling you. You can be a believer and still not be conformed to the principles of God. You can be saved, full of the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord, spoke in tongues, was baptized in Jesus' name, and still struggling in an area that God has given you victory because you have not properly connected to the vine. Praise the Lord. I want you to understand this. Listen to what he says, amen, in verse 7. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, or you can ask what you want, and it will be done unto you. And herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, and so shall you be my disciple. God is not glorified when I shout. God is not glorified when I roll on the floor. Although those things are beautiful, I love the manifestation of the Spirit at work. Y'all know I do. Praise the Lord. But God is glorified when his children bear fruit and exercise growth and maturity in him. Praise the Lord. And sometimes I can, I can see by our response to the different situations of life whether or not we are properly connected. Praise the Lord. Because a connected person acts a certain way, responds a certain way, amen, lives a certain way. Praise the Lord. Not out of judgment, not out of condemnation, but because I am connected. Whenever, praise the Lord, your house is connected to electric current, if you put your finger, amen, in that socket, you're going to know that your house is connected to current. Come on, somebody. But if I if I plug something in and, and the light don't come on or the radio don't turn on or the iron don't get hot, there's something Wrong. Now, if there is power and current everywhere else in the house, but I plug it up and I'm not getting a man a connection, either the wall socket is burnt out or something is wrong, amen, with the piece of equipment that I'm trying, amen, but there's current in the house. I'm trying to tell y'all there's current in the kingdom of God. There's current in the kingdom of God. There's blessing in the kingdom of God. There's increase in the kingdom of God. There's power in the kingdom of God. It's all around you. There's blessings all around you. God is doing things in your neighborhood. God is blessing your neighbor. God is causing new to go all over, all around you. And everybody's, amen, experiencing new. But you're stuck and you're not experiencing new. It's not God. It's you, and you need to check your connection. Oh, God, I hope somebody's getting what I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. You need to check your connection. Hallelujah. This is the season that God is blessing his children. I want y'all to understand. Yes, we all go through some things. Yes, there are some issues in life. We're going to go through. Pray. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's what the Bible says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But then he didn't stop right there. He said, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. So there is not amen, an affliction that God cannot and will not deliver me from. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. You got to check your connections. Hallelujah. You still struggling over the same thing. Something is not connected properly. Oh my God. And so I look and, and I see, and, and so then I, I say, well, praise the Lord. If God is not to blame, 
And, 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 and you really can't blame the devil because the devil can't break your connection. I know y'all don't believe that, but the Bible says you're in my hand and no man can pluck you out of my hand. Nobody can pluck you out of, of, of Christ's hand. So, so, so the devil can't break your connection. He can tempt you. Amen. He can aggravate you. He can hinder you. He can war against you. But most of the things that people are experiencing is not spiritual warfare. It's a man consequences of negative decisions. Praise the Lord. You decided not to be connected. You, you, deci you decided I'm not going to do Bible study. You decided I'm not coming to church. You, you decided that I'm not going to sacrifice and give God what is right. I'm going to give him whatever I want to. You decided that I'm not going to have any prayer life. I'm not going to participate in anything spiritual. I'm going to do what I want to do when I get ready to do it. I'm going to jam when I want to jam. I'm going to party. I'm going to sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. I'm going to do like I want to do. And then when you, praise the Lord, hallelujah, reap. From what you have sown, you don't like the harvest. And so then you say, the devil is after me. Or, or, or I'm going through warfare. You're not going through warfare. You are suffering the consequences or you're reaping the harvest of what you've sown. You better check your connection. Praise the Lord. So, 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 so how do I check my connection? I'm glad you asked. Praise the Lord. And I told you I'm not going to be here long. I'm, 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 I want to say this and, I, and I'm going to finish. Praise God. We, we, we suffer, the, the, the people, and, and, and I'm not talking about the world tonight, praise God. I'm, I'm talking about us, spirit-filled people. We, we suffer from what uh, 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 my, my friend and colleague, Superintendent Braxton Lee Bowser, uh, calls it chronic uh, doomism. We, su we suffer from chronic doomism. You know, do me. Do, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do me and you do you. And, 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 and do and, and, and be yourself and be and, and do. And, and, and while I understand, praise the Lord, what people are saying when they say do you or do me or, or, or you know, be, be yourself. Uh, they're saying be honest and, and be real and, and I'm okay with that or, or mind your business and, and I'm okay with that. Uh, 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 but can I say something? You've been doing you for a long time and doing you don't work. You might need to try doing something else because you might be kind of jacked up, praise the Lord. And that's the reason why you keep running into these brick walls because you keep doing you rather than doing what the word of God says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and then when you do what you want to do, praise the Lord, and it doesn't turn out right, now all of a sudden, praise the Lord, you, you want, you, you, you're going out to God and, you, and, and listen, you can't, praise the Lord, make God an afterthought. The Bible says, seek ye First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek God first, not yourself, not your will, not your. Seek God first, praise God. And so this chronic doomism, praise God, got us all twisted up in the game, thinking that I can do what I want to do the way I want to do it, and still God going to come and, 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 and I'm going to be blessed. And it doesn't work like that. God loves you, precious heart. But God is a God of order. God is a God of principle. And there are some things that he has set in motion in the earth and he does not violate them because if God violate the Bible says for as long as the earth remains praise the Lord in, in, in Genesis chapter 8 praise the Lord for as long as the earth remains there shall be seed time and harvest cold winter and heat so God has set in the laws of the earth in motion and it says what you sow is what you reap praise the Lord and so since what I sow is what I reap praise the Lord God is not going to violate that simply because you're having a bad day. God is not going to violate that simply because you decide to come to church and speak in tongues after you done lived all kind of life like you want to live. Now, all of a sudden, you want to start serving the Lord. And, and, and you don't feel like because for five minutes you did right, you, now you don't feel like you should reap the consequences of when you were doing wrong. And I'm just so sorry, baby. It doesn't work like that. God is a God of order. God is a God of principles. God, God has boundaries. And since he has boundaries and since he has orders, you can only violate those boundaries and orders so much, praise the Lord, until you begin to reap, amen, what you've been doing. And, and so it's not the devil. It's not haters. It's not spectators. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's you, praise the Lord. It's you. It's just you. Just simply you. Hallelujah. If nobody don't want to help you, it's you. It's not everybody. Why everybody want to help everybody? Don't nobody want to help. It's you, praise the Lord. 
Huh? And, and sometimes instead of looking at everybody else, you know, they say when you point a finger at somebody, you got three fingers pointing back at you. Instead of, praise the Lord, hallelujah, pointing out everybody. Sometimes you need to point your finger at the man in the mirror and you need to examine yourself and say, let me check my connections. Am I connected as I ought to be? Am I following the principles of God? My money is funny and my change is strange. So let me ask you a question. Have you submitted your finances? Listen to me. Have you submitted your finances under the will of Almighty God? Have you submitted your finances? Do you consult God, praise the Lord, about your money? Or do you just, since you make the money, you go and work? Do you just buy whatever you want to whenever you get ready? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So not just the tenth belongs to God. Everything that you have belongs to God. All of your money belongs to God. Now he asked for the tenth because the tenth is a representative of the whole. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And some folks say, well, well, well you all of it belongs to God. Well, you don't give all of it because, because you fight about giving ten cents. Praise the Lord. And so when, when I consistently give to God, that means I put my finances under the authority of God. And I say, God, hallelujah, you control my money. This is, in fact, it's not mine. It's your money. So you teach me what to do. You teach me how to handle. See, what tithing is, tithing is a discipline. It teaches us discipline. And so most people, most people that are not disciplined to tithe, they don't, they're disciplined not to pay their bills. They don't pay their bills on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, 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 and when, 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 when the bill man calls them. They, they ignore the calls because they don't pay their bills on time. Praise the Lord. Everything is running always uh, five days late or ten days behind. You're always behind. You're always behind. That's not the kingdom. That's not of God. And the reason why you're always behind because you have no discipline in your life. And, and if you would learn how to put God first in your money or in your business. Amen. I heard the Bible says in, in, in I believe it's Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. In in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Honor the Lord with the first fruit of thine increase. Come on somebody. And so shall thy barns burst with plenty. And your presses will come forth with new wine. He says that when you financially honor me, I'm going to bless you. Now either God means that or he's lying. So if we're always in a struggle, praise the Lord, it simply means that we are violating one principle financially. We're not taking care of God. And then after you pay your tithe, you have to budget your money. You have to have some good sound financial principles. You got to save some money. You can't go out there and make all of these bills. And say, I'm living, you know, I'll never be broke another day in my life. Quote that all day long. But if you live like a broke man, hallelujah, I mean, you can quote it. But if you live like a, can I tell you something? Wealthy people don't spend money like broke folk do. The reason why broke folk are broke is because they spend money like broke folk. Rich folk don't have nothing to prove to nobody. Y'all don't like what I'm telling you. I, I understand. So, so, so if you're struggling, if, if, if your body's sick, now understand this. There are some illnesses that come, praise God, through our genetic makeup, praise the Lord. So, so I'm, I'm not dealing with that. But what I am dealing with is, you know, you, you, you have hypertension. Uh, you know, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that diabetes run in your family. But you eat however you want to eat whenever you get ready. And, and now you're in the prayer line praying for healing. And it's okay to get healing. But then after you get healing, you need to start living by the principles so that you don't keep getting sick. I, I often say it like this. If, you, if, if I fall out of a tree and break my arm, okay, uh, and, 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 I, and I pray and ask God to heal my arm, he heals my arm. Praise God. My arm is healed. But if I climb up in that same tree and fall on that same arm again, that same arm is subject to get broken. Did God not heal it? Yes, God healed it, but I violated a principle. I violated the principle of the law of gravity. I fell down, and, and the law of gravity says what goes up must come down. Praise the Lord. So that's the same way with sickness in your body. If you fail to take care of your body, if you fail to do what's right by your body, you're going to have some illnesses and sicknesses in your body. If your marriage is on the rocks, if, you can't, if, if, if your marriage ain't working, somewhere, somehow, somebody's violating principles. 
You're looking for the right person and you need the right principles. It's the principles. So you need to check your connection. I'm, I'm just bringing all of this stuff up because these are the issues that the saints are praying about and they bring it to the altar and they're hollering and they're screaming, but they're not checking their connections because God doesn't lie. His word is true. His word is true. So, 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 so give me three points and I'm going to let y'all go. I, I didn't mean to hold you this long. Praise the Lord. The first thing, if you want to make sure that you have a right connection, hallelujah, somebody type this, invest in your spiritual life, invest in your spiritual life. I need you to begin to invest in your spirit man. I need you to invest in your, some of your spiritual man is bankrupt because you don't invest in it. You invest in the stock market. You invest in, in, in work. You invest in friendships. You invest in boo things, but you're not investing in your spiritual life. And so, amen, what you don't feed soon dies. What you don't pay attention to gets neglected. And whatever is neglected, praise the Lord, will become a hindrance to you. Hear what I'm telling you. You need to invest in your spiritual life. Praise the Lord. Quickly, Galatians, amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, chapter 6 and verse 7 says this. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He didn't stop there. He says, for he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. When I sow to my flesh, when I'm always doing fleshly things, praise the Lord. I'm all, and, and, and notice, he's not condemning you for doing some things of the flesh because life does consist of some fleshly things. But when you sow of the flesh, the only thing that you're going to get out of it is of vanity and corruption. And so some of you spend your whole life doing whatever makes you feel good and what makes you feel happy, but you're not disciplined to the things of the spirit. And so when it comes to needing to draw from that spiritual reservoir, it's very lacking because you have not invested anything in it. Praise the Lord. So you need to invest, amen, hallelujah, in your spirit, man. What, what do I mean by that? What is your prayer life like? Hallelujah. How often do you pray? And I'm not talking about when you get in trouble. And I'm not talking about them little prayer symbols that we be posting on social media. When we pray. Most of the folk that post them prayer hands ain't praying. They just think when I post them prayer hands, that means I'm praying. That, no, no, no. That ain't, they ain't praying. Everybody ain't praying. They might be talking, but they ain't praying. Hallelujah. How often do you spend time in prayer? How often do you spend time in the word of God? How often, praise the Lord, do you spend time with the people of God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If, if you're not doing any of these things, you're not investing in your spiritual life. Check this out. Check this out. I'm, I'm just giving you word tonight so you can check your connection. Amen. Psalms chapter one. Listen at this. Blessed. This is Psalms one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Mm, that might be a bad connection. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Nor standeth in the way of sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Do you meditate? And the word meditate in Hebrew simply means to mutter over and over and over again in your mind. How much do you meditate on God's word? How much time do you give to think about the things that I know this is not a very popular broadcast because if I, if, if I was getting ready to say that God is about to bless you with a car or with a house, He's going to give you some money. Praise the Lord. Folk will be falling out, screaming and crying because we want to be told all that stuff that's going to benefit our flesh. But you don't want to discipline yourself to walk in the principles of God. Mm. The Bible says when you do these things, you will be like a tree planted by the water. What, what, what would you rather have? Would you rather have God to dump a whole, praise the Lord, a, a puddle of water on you? If you were a dry tree, would you rather God jump a whole pool of water on you or would you rather God plant you by a river of water? 
I'd rather be planted by the river of water because if he dumps a pool on me, it feels good at the time, but after a while, it runs out. But if I'm planted by the waters, the water's consistently running over my roots, and so I'm staying connected to the thing. You see, some of you, you just live from blessing to blessing, and when you get that blessing and that blessing has exhausted itself, then you are dry again, and you need the Lord to come back in and bless you again. But when you are planted, good God Almighty, when you are planted by the river, which means I'm connected to the source. Hallelujah. He says, hallelujah, you will bring forth fruit. There go that word fruit in his season and your leaf will not wither and whatsoever you do shall prosper. Did you hear what I said? Whatever you do is going to prosper. I'm prophetically declaring to you that if you make it your business these next three months to tighten up your connections with God, tighten up how you walk before it, tighten up your prayer life, tighten up your amen study of God's word, tighten up your attendance to church. If your church not open, you need you need to at least dial in on the prayer calls, at least dial in on the online Bible studies. You need to get connected. Some of you don't go to church and you don't connect, but you love God and you wonder why you are spiritually depleted. You are spiritually depleted because you have not made a connection and God not going to make you get connected. You're going to have to make up in your mind. I choose to be connected. Please connect me, God. No, 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 no. God don't connect you. You have to connect yourself. You have to show that being connected to God is important. He says, abide in me, which means I have the responsibility of getting connected. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Number two, amen. Praise the Lord. Be careful what influence your thought life. Be careful what influences your thought life. Be careful what influences your thought life. And that goes right back to Psalms 1. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. When somebody is ungodly, it is not good to follow their counsel. It is not good, glory to God, hallelujah, uh, 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 to do the things that they tell you to do because they're always coming from a fleshly, carnal perspective. The Bible says you're blessed when you don't walk in ungodly counsel or standeth in the way of sinners. In other words, what does that mean? I need to be careful that I don't allow the lifestyle of sinners to influence me and influence my decisions with God. You cannot be a man, a successful Christian and continue to, to, to deal heavily with folk who are not in it, not affect you. I'm not telling you not to talk to people that are in the world because the only way you can bring them to Christ is if you deal with them. But when you, praise the Lord, stand in their way, when you are connected to them, it will affect you. How do I know it? The Bible teaches us that Lot, who was a righteous man, the Bible says, was vexed by the filthy conversation of Sodom and Gomorrah. He was, because he hung around those folks, they vexed his soul. Amen. I want you to understand when you hang around people who don't love Jesus, who don't love the things of God, they will vex your spirit, man. They will vex your soul. And after a while, they will vex you to a place where you even stop worrying about things spiritually. And you won't be able to tell no difference between you and them. So you need to be careful what influences your thought life, what I'm watching on television, what I'm listening to, and then what kind of conversations Amen. I'm involved in. Who are my friends? Praise the Lord. I, not every saved person can be your friend. Not every saved person can be your confidant. Not every saved person can be your prayer partner. Some people, amen, praise the Lord, although they may be saved, although they may be in the church, they are still carnal. They are still immature. And so if you're in a place of struggle, you can't afford to connect you. It's like two babies, amen, in diapers. Both of them got doo-doo in their diapers trying to 
to change one another. Neither one of them can help one another because they both are in stank. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when you, amen, are trying to go higher, you need to connect with somebody that's up the line. Praise God. Hallelujah. You don't need to connect with somebody that's struggling just like you. You need to connect with somebody that got the deliverance. Praise God. Because that will encourage you to push forward. Everybody ain't your friend. Everybody in the church, and they might be your brother and sister in Christ, but they're not your friend. Everybody don't belong in your inbox. Everybody don't belong to be your friend on Facebook. I'm sorry, you've got to choose people discriminately. Yes, you must discriminate because you have to check, amen, what is influencing my thought life. Because as a man thinketh, Come on, somebody. As a man thinketh, praise the Lord, so is he. So if I be, if I am a compilation of my thoughts, then I need to be careful what are what I'm thinking about and what I allow to influence my thoughts. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. I need to be careful. I need to be careful what influences my thoughts. I can't talk in every conversation. I Listen, 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 listen. The Bible says this. Don't make friends with an angry man and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest you learn his ways and he become a snare to you. When you deal with folk that are uh, 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 emotionally unhinged, that's what that scripture means emotionally unhinged and you hang around folks that are consistently emotionally un you don't know which one you gonna meet from there to today they saying I'm blessed and highly favored the next day every word they say you gotta say beep, 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 beep. they are emotionally unhinged God says disconnect from those kind of people he says less praise the Lord they be a snare to you because you learn their ways so you can't deal with somebody that is unhinged and it don't affect you. Oh, my God. The word of God says that when you're unable to control your emotions, you're like a city that does not have any walls. You have no protection. That means anybody can get in and anything can get out. When I see people that just blow up at the, at, 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 I say, oh. They don't have no, they don't have no defense. They're, they're, they're emotionally unstable. Well, pastor, I just got to be me. I'm just real. Well, baby, you, you, you real, but you need to get really delivered. Praise God. And when you get really delivered, you'll get control over your emotions and everybody won't be able to set you off and everybody won't be able to push your buttons. Amen. And you'll actually start bearing the fruit and you'll become Christ like, which means you'll be a disciple. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, so, so be careful what influences your thought life. Be careful. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful. Be careful. You know how y'all on my live tonight? Be careful. Everybody's live is not for you, baby. Hallelujah. Every live is not for you. Every chat room is not for you. Every discussion is not your. Learn when some things you don't, you know, you don't need to be in. Learn when the conversation is too deep for you and disconnect yourself automatically. Stop being so doggone nosy. Somebody ought to type that. Stop being nosy. Some folk, you just nosy. You just want to know everything. You want to be in every conversation. You want to know what happened with who, who did this, and, and what you doing, and this. You just nosy, 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 nosy. And that nosiness is what's keeping you in your flesh. You got to stop being nosy. You got to learn how to mind your own business. So what if Paul shot Peter? Praise the Lord. They didn't shoot you. Pray for Paul and Peter and mind your business. Stop being nosy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then, I'm going to say this, and I'm quitting, all right? I'm quitting. Be consistent. Be consistent in your spiritual life. Be consistent. Somebody type that. Be consistent. Hallelujah. The Bible says confidence, amen, hallelujah, in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Be consistent. Are you consistent? Are you consistent in prayer? You know, some people say, I pray for an hour. And that's great if you pray for an hour. I pray for three hours, five hours. All of that is good. If you commit to praying 15 minutes, 
If you commit to praying five or 10 minutes, if you commit to reading your Bible, reading one chapter a day or reading uh, five chapters or however, as long as you are consistent because consistency builds habits and habits form lifetime, praise God, bonds in your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You need to be, you need to be consistent in going to church. Stop making, you know, when, when, when COVID came in, praise the Lord, and the churches, we had to shut down to keep people safe. I almost cringed because I, I know that some people use uh, COVID and the pandemic as a reason not to go to church. They go everywhere else but church. And, 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 and while I take COVID very seriously, I, and I want y'all to understand, anybody that checked my record know that I did all that I could do to try to keep our people safe, praise the Lord. I also understood that the, the service of the Lord is equally as important as keeping the people safe. And I cringed in my heart because I knew that some people would take that as a reason to, 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 to not be in the services of the Lord. And some people where they are spiritually cannot afford to be that disconnected. Amen. Are you understanding? And the enemy is playing a field day with people's minds because they're not consistent. You need to be consistent in coming to worship. You need to be consistent in Bible study. Why is it for, amen, and I saw this, uh, 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 I saw this post and I almost died. Praise God, because it's true. People will pay money to go to the school of the prophets, but they won't even go to Sunday school or they won't go to Bible study. So, so what are you going to learn in a conference that you won't learn in Bible study? In fact, if you go to a conference and you haven't went to Bible study, that's, you're not even going to get it because you don't have the, the, the basic foundational tools that you need that you learn in Sunday school or that you learn in Bible study that, so that when you get to the conference, you can pick up how the meat that they're trying to give you. Praise the Lord. How you, you, you skip your own church to go somewhere else. Praise the Lord. Y'all ain't hear me so that I can be spiritually in doubt. No, 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 no. You need to, praise the Lord, be consistent. Be consistent in prayer. Be consistent in seeking God. Be consistent in fellowship. Make yourself accountable. Make yourself accountable. Make, in other words, Praise the Lord. Voluntarily submit yourself to somebody and make yourself accountable. What does that do? That puts a discipline because if some, if you know that somebody is looking for you, somebody is expecting you to do certain things, it's going to make you want to be consistent and it's going to bring the best out of it. So I hope these few words uh, have encouraged you. Praise the Lord. Um, I didn't come on uh, very long. I didn't come on with with, with, with hype. I came on to give you uh, some, some meat tonight. I come, I come to encourage you. God wants to bless you. Hallelujah. And God, God is not uh, what I consider. He won't bless you today and then decide not to bless you tomorrow. God is consistent. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he is the same, he wants you to live this abundant life. And the way you live this abundant life Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to God is by making sure you stay connected to him. Stay connected. Stay connected. Check your connections. Check your connections. Check if, 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 if there's some statically, if, if, if you ain't heard God, if you ain't felt God in a minute, check your connections. Check it. Praise the Lord. It's, 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 it's simple. You don't have to walk around in a dry place. And I just want y'all to understand that. You don't have to walk around defeated. People that are always defeated, got this defeated mentality, defeated mindset, it's because they're not connected. I can already tell you what your problem I ain't got to prophesy. I ain't got to fall out speaking tongues and come back with a word from the Lord. You're not connected. If you go somewhere and sit your happy hips down and get connected, I promise you, I promise you, your life will change. Hallelujah. If you be consistent, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you... Praise the Lord. Be careful what's in your thought life. Are y'all hearing me? <coughs> Excuse me. Praise the Lord. You be careful what's in your thought life. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And if you invest in your spiritual man, praise the Lord. Read that Bible. Read, read some books. Challenge yourself. Cause yourself to be challenged. And if you do these things, beloved, if you check your connection, you will live a victorious Christian life. But you must stay connected. I love you with the love of God. If this has blessed you, if you think it's, it's good, share it with somebody. Tag somebody. Let them know 
This was a word that blessed me, and I think it'll bless you. Let's stay connected. God bless you in the name of the Lord, and I'll see you in Jesus' name.